Hello, hello. Uh, we're back at it with uh, some five-minute uh, action uh, blitz. Um, hopefully, uh, this goes better than my last game or the last video, because I had to resign way quicker than I ever had in my life, and I'll just leave it at that. Anyways, um, I'm going to put myself in the queue, five, and oh, I get a game right away. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, we have a French here. French, French, French. Um, hmm. Let me go for the advance. Let's see how that goes. Knight g7, okay. I think I should go bishop d3 for this one. Uh, yeah, and this line of the French is pretty interesting because... Um, Black is really solid here. I mean, the bishop on e6 is doing a multitude of very useful things. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a pretty uh, pretty interesting way to play uh, with this bishop. I actually like to play this with the black pieces, so how am I going to deal with it? How am I going to deal playing against it? Hmm. I would love to trade the dark squared bishops, because if I trade the dark squared bishops, then there's some weak dark squares. d6 is a little bit weak. Maybe f6 becomes a little bit weak. Basically, I have the space advantage. The bishop on e6 is doing a great job protecting both the at d5 and f5 pawns, but if I get rid of those dark squared bishops, I think I might have something. Um, I think... Yeah, I think black might go h6, actually, to prevent bishop g5, because that's sort of where I want to go. Um... Yeah, good move, h6, very good move. Um, hmm. Hmm. Now he's saying, why do you play g3? Why do you weaken the dark score? Why do you weaken your light squares around your king like that? Unnecessarily, I'm really have my eye on playing. Okay, g5. I have my eye on playing bishop takes h6, and uh, that definitely puts a really weird stamp on my plans. But yeah, but now I can play this h4 move. I think is interesting. Um, and yeah, the idea if g takes h4, I have bishop takes h6. I think f4 is forced. Yeah, that looked like the natural move to me. And then I'm just going to take it, actually. Ng4, okay. Very interesting. I'm play knight h2. And I want to open up this king. So, I'm going to try and get rook g1 in here. It might not work, but it looks interesting. If I can somehow get rook, if I can, I'm going to play knight takes g4 here, and if bishop takes g4, rook g1, and I have this in a very good pin. Okay, h5. So rook g, now I'm threatening f3, so king h8 looks normal. And I'm wondering if I can just double on the G file. It looks very, very primitive. Very primitive. But I'm wondering if it works, because... Yeah, he, this pawn, this, these pawns are good for now, but... If I'm able to open this up... It'd be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, so I think now my idea is to play F3. And then if G3... I might just sack the exchange with rook takes G3... Or I might even go knight f1 and then take on g3. So I like my chances here. I really do. Uh, unless black can overprotect g4 so that I can't break through with rook g8 and queen d7, I think I might have something. So I'm going to go f3. I don't see anything game ending with that. And, you know. 
whether it's a good plan or a bad plan, you got to follow through with your plan. So Maybe I would have been better served playing knight f1 first, but this is my idea all along. To sacrifice and exchange. And if queen h4, I'm going to go queen h2. That's the idea. Very complicated position, but I think if, I, if I'm if i not getting checkmated or there's some devastating attack on my king, I have more than enough compensation for the exchange because I have this really nice pawn mass in the center, and Black's king is not that safe, so, you know, I got something to work with. Anyways, uh, NBA season is starting tomorrow. I'm very much excited about that. Um, basketball is my favorite sport, um, by f like, easily. Um, so you might be like, well, what about chess? Isn't chess a sport? You're gonna kill you guys. Some of you guys are gonna kill me about this, but I I actually don't think it is. So um, that's just where I stand. Um, I think chess is a game with sporting qualities, but I just I don't I don't I don't buy the whole it's a sport thing, you know. Um, Queen d7, okay, defending the bishop. I'm gonna go f5. Very strong move, and the point is now, if the bishop takes an f5, I have queen takes h4. Nasty, 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 nasty. So, um, I think I'm, uh, yep, I think I'm about to win this game. Uh, hmm. Now, the thing is, I was going to check on f6, but if I check on f6... Uh, rook g7, queen h3 is, is a mate, so I can't let that happen. So I'm going to, huh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I did not, I did not anticipate, uh, there being a mate. Aha! I'm gonna check an f6 and rook g7 and then knight f5. And with that, I threaten queen takes g7 mate and I stop queen h. I, I, I stop queen takes. I stop queen h3 mate and I threaten queen takes g7 mate. That's gonna be tough to stop. And okay, rook g8 is fine, but now I have rook takes g7 and I'm still threatening these things. And now it's checkmate. That's nice. That's the way to start one of these videos. Um, yeah, that's nice. I think it was a really complicated position. Um, my g3 probably wasn't the best, but it made the position a little bit too much sharp, too sharp in this. Gilsh guy could not handle it in the end, so it's nice. I'll take I'll take I'll take these types of uh, I'll take these types of games any day of the week. And by those games, I mean wins. Wins are hard to come by. Invisible Man. That was a really good book. I hope he's talking about the book because I hope that's the his username is a reference to that book because I love that book. Oh wait, was it was it called Invisible Man or was there just an Invisible Man in the book? I don't remember. It's been a while since grade school. All right, so I'm gonna I was starting with English, but since he's so hell bent on playing a King's Indian or Indian defense with Bishop G7. Might go e5 here, but he's so hell bent on it. I'm gonna give him what he wants. I'm gonna take the center. Then Black's gonna try to attack my center, and I'm gonna try to defend it. And you know, we'll see what happens. So now it's just a normal King's Indian castles. Go Bishop e2, and after oh, Knight bd7. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to castle and allow e5. Rook e1. Uh, 
Yeah. I always thought knight bd7 was a clever move order in the king's indian before playing e5, because then the exchange variation isn't as potent. Um, I always found it, I always liked playing knight bd7. It's sort of the old way of playing the king's indian, and most of the modern ways you used to play knight c6. You play e5 first, and then you go knight c6. But, I don't know. There are many ways to do this, so he found another way. Black is sort of making all the useful moves before taking on uh, d4. But now that he plays rook e8, it's pretty much clear once taken d4, so I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to play d5. And, uh, okay, c5 I think is a bit, a, a bit too much, because now... Now there's really no um, now there's really no uh, I, I just think that white is get it gets has too much space here so I'm gonna continue to take space play g4 and just make it really difficult for uh, for uh, for black to play um, for black to play f5 um, bishop g5 I'm gonna go queen d2 and uh, well. Getting an f5 is going to be a bit tricky now. Another key point about this move is if queen e8, I might I might play knight b5, and then the queen would have to go to e7 to protect the d6 pawn. So I like my position. I like it a lot. It's it's always important that you don't give your opponent too much space. Very important. So. Uh, H6, bishop H4, definitely want to keep that pin. Queen B6, okay. Attacking B2, but I don't know about that. I don't buy it. I'm going to go Queen D2, just connect the rooks. The Queen on B6 is really poorly placed, so I don't... I don't believe that was a, a great one. I'm going to go bishop d3 to just put a clamp on this f5 move. Knight b8, this guy is so desperate to play f5, but at what cost? He's moving his pieces backward. I'm going to go king h2. And if he goes f5 here, now I can take multiple times and then go rook g1. And this guy is just so, so hell-bent on playing f5. But, you know, you have to develop your other pieces before you make breaks like this. Okay, so knight a6, the idea is to play knight b4 maybe. And yeah, I'm not going to allow it. I'm just going to go a3. And rook g1, and I'm I'm slowly but surely just I'm 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 waiting for f5 to come. I'm building up for it, but um, I don't think f5 is a move that Black should be playing. In fact, I might even go g5 at the right moment. Hmm. What will Invisible Man do? I don't understand these moves. Gee, I do not understand rook f c eight. Where, where, where is the? Why is the rook going there? Can I just go g five right away? Can I do that? I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait a little bit. I'm gonna double the rooks. Wow, that blunders upon an h6, right? Ah, but queen takes b2, okay. 
Hmm. Yep, I'm going to take it. And then I'm going to play g5. I'm just going to open this position up. This position deserves to be opened up. I don't believe this. You, one can play like this and survive. I don't believe it. And I just, I don't. Now this knight can go to h5 and maybe good knight f4, but I think I can go knight e2 and just stop all of that nonsense. Yeah, and I just, I don't see how black will survive this if I come in with knight takes f7 at some point, or f4. All my pieces are pointed towards the king side, and blacks are not, so... This this is this should be over soon, hopefully in my favor. Queen f6 is the only move to hold on, I feel like, to stop to control the f4 square, and then I have to find a way to break through. So I expect queen f6, and then I'm gonna have to figure out a way through. Only I can figure a way, a way through now, I just I don't see any way, yeah. Maybe knight e6 is interesting. Maybe knight takes f7. No knight e6, that looks really attractive to me. The point is that my queen gets to h6. Uh, possibly, uh, hopefully, that's the plan. And if f takes e6, I have rook takes g6. And yeah, I, I, hopefully this is a, works out and I can break through. Um, I think also I have f4 is an idea now. Um, and if I can get an f4, then then I'm really in good shape. But uh, knight e6, queen h6, f4, a lot of good ideas, n n a lot of time. I think I'm in good shape. Takes, takes, okay. And now I have queen h6. And now is the point. Is now this king can't move, and I'm threatening rook takes g6. Knight g7 is a good way to keep the game going. Definitely. Um, and now I have to blast the position open once more. Oh, knight g3. And the idea now is to go knight f5. And wow, he's still he's still in the game. Knight e8. Hmm. Just trying to put as much pressure as I can on this this g6 pawn, and now here's the breakthrough. And yeah, the re resigned reservation. That was an interesting game. Uh, I think Black just dilly dallied a little bit too long on the queens on the on the back rank. I mean. You gotta take on d4 if you're gonna play this knight bd7 stuff, and then I basically black just allowed me all this too much space, all this space. So first was queen b6 does not make sense, knight h7 not really, knight b8 is just too much. So then I just took more and more space, and then that was it. Space advantages do matter. All right, we're gonna play Goldman, this GM Goldman. Okay, or Goldmund rather. Um, English. I'm gonna go King's. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you guys how the King's Aim is done. Unlike our last opponent, I'm delaying the development of the G8 knights so that I can go F5 in one go. I think it's really useful to do that. I can go F5 in one go. Then I don't have to move the knight backwards to go F5 later. So I think it's a move order that's 
specifically designed uh, to be effective against the um, the English, actually. So. I didn't think I blundered a pawn because I thought this pin would be really annoying on e5. I play rook e8. That was my idea, at least. And now I can go... I have to put some knights... The knight on d7. I'm going to pick here. Yeah. And I think I just get the pawn back, which was, was fine. Black structure... Black, black structure is a little bit worse than white, so that's actually going to be a problem here. Is uh, how to how to deal with that? Because now bishop f4 comes, very strong and annoying. And uh, I have a bad structure. I do. I have a bad pawn structure. G takes f5 was a risky decision, just probably a dubious decision, really. But um, this is not the position that you want to get when you're playing against the English. Knight b5, very strong move. Yeah. Tough. Hmm. You know, bishop d6, d6, keep developing. Knight c7 is good. Black, white has the two bishops now, which is not what I was the desired result or the desired effect of uh, me playing this. And um, yeah, it's really been quite bad actually this uh, this game um, for a few reasons. Um, but the biggest one is the structural deficit of h7 f5 was bad. We're playing two takes f5, and then to compounding that, I just traded right into an endgame where I had no chance. So. Um, not good. Play rook takes e4 just to have an active rook at least, but really tough to do anything here. So I managed to get to a rook bishop ending with a pawn down, but the problem is my stru the structure of my pawns makes it like a pawn and, and a quarter down, or a pawn and a half down, because this h7 f5 structure is just no good. And white might even consider playing g4 here, yep, to break up my pawns, or to sort of loosen up my rook, and really tough, really, really tough. Um... I should resign here, but I'm just going to play a few more moves. Yeah, I'm going to resign here. I'm down a pawn. I have to trade these bishops. No good. So really, the critical position came quite early in this game. After knight f6, after in this position, I was good to delay the development of knight. Now after e4, it's it's a really interesting move I haven't seen before, to be frank. Usually you play d3 before playing e4. Um, but maybe, uh, maybe I should have taken it. 
Um, I definitely shouldn't have played GF. That was structurally incorrect. So, gold one, Goldman, good job. I played this guy GM Goldman a ton in the past. Um, I usually get the best of them, um, but uh, not today. Donkey Chess. Donkey Chess. 2071. I wonder if that's his rating in real life. 2071. Or maybe that's the year he anticipates living till. Who knows? Long way till then. I'm tired of this King's Indian type setup, so instead of going C4, I'm going to go for this. And C6, this is like the Gurganitsa setup, I think it's called, where you play... It's like a Karakon with a Fianchetto. And I like to play H3 just to sort of not allow this Bishop G4 stuff, because that's typically what these players like. I also don't want to rush the E5 break, because if you play E5, you don't, you're not worse by any means, but you give, the, you give Black this position, this closed vision, or semi-closed vision that Black really wants, and I think it's better for White to actually keep the tension here. So that's why I'm just going to overprotect e4, keep the tension, keep my options open, op, keep my options open in terms of flexibility, and then see see where I can go from there. Um, of course, I want to take the knight here, not the bishop, because you don't want to trade that bishop. And on this bishop e6 move, it's typical. It really is. But the issue is, or the issue it might be, is that um, sometimes it's a little bit weak there. Sometimes there are exchange sacrifices with connected with uh, Connected with uh, uh, rook takes e6, so I'm I'm gonna put my rook on e1 and then and maybe look at that later. Uh, snake d7. You always also have to wonder here. Every move if there's c5 is viable. I don't think it's viable yet because if c5 I can play d5. So those are the two things you have to be keenly aware of when you're playing against this system. Um, and so far I have been aware of them. Um, so you don't want to allow c5 and you want to look out for this exchange check price on e6. Um, and, um, yeah, and then you want to squeeze. Knight BD6, knight B6 is a little bit of an awkward square for the knight. Um, I'm going to take space with A4. Try and kick it. Yeah, bishop D5, another typical idea. I don't really want to trade the, those, these bishops because it, it helps black structure a little bit, and um, yeah, I just don't, I want to keep the bishops on, so I'm going to go bishop d3. I was sort of leaking confidence there, I was like, I'm going to put a d3 or c2, it's tough to say, it's definitely tough to say. I think, yeah, the reason I, I yeah, I put on d3 is because I want to think about playing c4, which he, of course, does not allow, but knight c4 is not the best square either, because... I have to have queen e2, and this knight doesn't look, it looks loose, and I'm also attacking the e7 pawn, so I'm not impressed with this sort of arrangement of the black pieces, because they're, it's a little bit awkward. Knight a5. This knight is dancing around a bit too uncomfortably for my taste. That I, I will point out. Hmm. I don't know, can I take this pawn and give up the two bishops? Yeah, I'm going to do it. It is a free pawn. And I like pawns. Pawns. A pawn, I like pawns a lot, so... Queen takes e7. I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to take it. First trade queens before anything else, and then take the bishop. And yeah, my structure's ruined, but I am a pawn up, so I'm hoping that means something here. Although, it, I think black actually has better compensation than I realized, so, whoops. C5, I was, I was counting on being able to play bishop g5 and getting an important tempo, because now f6 is forced, and then I can go back to e3. And yeah, this is the idea, is that now that now that f6 is played, I can actually take with the bishop, and there's no bishop to oppose me because f6 has been played. And knight b3 fails to bishop c4 check. So I just keep the two bishops, 
and my and I, I that's that's really a huge 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 thing here. So now I go rook a d1, and I'm threatening to play bishop takes a7 and just take another pawn, which black can't really afford right now. Okay, um, fair enough. Knight that knight c6. I have to move that some this bishop somewhere. Is c5 or e3? I'm not sure. I'm gonna go to e3 just because it looks a little bit more solid um, than c5, but we'll see if it's the right choice. And then knight e5 is an interesting move. Um, but I'm just gonna go bishop e2. And if now I can play f4 and kick the knight, kick the knight back, and then put my bishop on f3 on another nice diagonal. Um, not to mention the fact that a7 is hanging still. So um, I think I have a lot of good options here. Mm -hmm. Go f4, kick the knight back, and then put my bishop on f3. And I think I'm 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 slowly making progress here. And knight a5 is a blunder. Because now I have rook takes d8, and if rook takes d8, I have bishop b6, and that's, I think it's called a skewer. Oh, and donkey chess resigned. So I think I, I think that was pretty clean. I followed more of the, some of the more basic rules of chess. Maybe my queen trade wasn't so good, but um, looking here, it's very important not to allow this bishop g4. And then, yeah, you just have to look out for the c5 break, make sure it's not possible, which I don't think it ever was. And try not to help black with these trades that make the space advantage, alleviates black space advantage. Because typically, when black doesn't have space, or black black is lacking space, it's beneficial to trade a few pair, a few minor pieces. Um, so, that's definitely what was the objective there. And uh, it seems like I pretty much got that done. So, uh, definitely we'll take that. So, let's see who the next opponent will be. Um, hmm. Let's see who the next opponent will be. Um, yeah, so our penguin. I've played this guy a ton of times, so many times. And uh, okay, so d4. Um, I'm gonna go d5. I don't think I've played d5 thus far yet. And we're gonna play. A queen's gambit accepted, just for the sake of it. It's relatively easy development. E4, typically the line goes E5, knight D5, bishop takes C4, knight B6, and black develops with the pieces. Now the bishop usually goes to B3, and then knight C6 comes, and then knight F3 typically is... Oh, knight E2 is the... Okay. Typically knight E3... Typically, knight uh, f3 is the move, but, uh, yeah, sometimes things change. I'm going to go bishop g4 uh, anyway, and the idea is just to provoke f3, and then go to f5. I think that's an important finesse, the weakening, because now, now black has successfully weakened the diagonal g1, a7, which is important. Um, castles... Okay, um, bishop e7, just normal development right now, just trying to get the king safe. Um, and I think it's a bit awkward here because very important for black to defend this d4 pawn, but not the easiest thing in the world to do uh, and get counterplay at the same time. So I think black is actually quite solid here, but uh, we'll see. g4, bishop g6 doesn't scare me yet. F4 is starting to scare me a little bit. Uh-oh, what do I do here? I'm going to go knight a5. Try and get a bishop for my troubles. Now knight takes b3. This might be a valid positional threat. F5 anyway. That is a bit shocking, I must say. I'm going to take on b3 first. No 
and um, my bishop looks mighty dangerous here. Really, really is lacking squares. Um, maybe it would have been better not to take the bishop on b3 right away and to play bishop h5 first, because then if... Uh, yeah, it, it might have been a better way to go. Uh, knight g3, bishop g4. f6 looks really juicy. I think, I think white is doing really well, probably close to winning here. But knight, king g2 looks a little bit slow to me. I get the point trying to trap the uh, trap my bishop, but something about that feels wrong. I'm gonna go bishop h4. Now my idea is to take on h3 to take on g3 and uh, live and keep and maybe go bishop h5. Rook f4. I'm gonna go bishop g5 and pin that rook. My position is at like defcon 4, though. It's very important that uh that I'm able to sort of liquidate here and then maybe uh, get something going. White has some very important ideas. Uh, rook g1, rook f1. Uh, F6. Yeah. And now I'm going to play G6. And my bishop is totally is totally lacking squares. My king is naked. Really not what you want to be doing. Fighting for dear life. I don't think queen b5 was the best move chasing this bishop because now now white loses the coordination. I think that was necessary to generate an attack, and um, now I get some counterplay either way with whatever happens. So probably a mistake to play queen b5, but but my now I have queen takes d4, very important move because now after queen takes b2, queen takes a5, I might have queen takes b2 check. Although this queen is coming mighty fast to h6. Hmm, so knight c4. Huh. So now the material is just a huge, huge, hugely favorable for white. I have two pieces for, I, I have a rook for two pieces, but that's not what you want. You want the two pieces. Um, but uh, my opponent may screw up. We can always uh, hope for that. And I'm going to have some checks. So hope for screw ups and uh, hope for some checks. So rook d4, just going to activate my rook somehow, rook d4. Then play rook e8, or no, I'm going to play king g8. Get my king back to civilization.
king takes six. If, say, I'm hoping that I get in this g5. If I get in g, g5, I'm back in the ball game. And I think I'm back in the ball game. Ha! Very important tactic. After if rook g6 check now, I have king f7. And I think I just am up in exchange. Very fortunate term of events. Definitely uh, could have done this better. but uh, And I forced a resignation. Wow. Very fortunate game. I'm making mistakes all over the place, but the key thing here was probably not anticipating g4. I could have prepared to, to meet this better. I could have thrown an h5 myself. I could have delayed castling, but I just sort of let g4 happen. And after f4, it's already a bit dangerous, so... Yeah. So, definitely when you're moving, you have to be aware of your opponent's ideas, and uh, I wasn't aware here. And then I was able to get to a position later where I had more time and could play for some tricks. So. Anyway, that's it for today, and uh, see you next time.